Space weather this week is calming down quite a bit compared to last week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see region 4274 right there firing off its last solar flare and solar storm before exiting off of the west limb of the sun and rotating to the sun's far side where it is still firing big solar storms and solar flares. Meanwhile, we've been also dealing with some fast solar wind from this coronal hole, but it has died down. And now we are patiently waiting for fast wind from this coronal hole to kind of rotate into the Earth strike zone so we can start getting some decent aurora shows, possibly at high latitudes. We do have a stealthy solar storm, and I'll talk about that just here in a minute, but they always precede these coronal holes. In fact, as we switch to this color sun, you can actually search, try to search for the dimming region that caused that, that, that was a signature of that stealthy solar storm, but I bet you'll have a hard time finding it. We had a couple puffs here and there, but really not all that exciting. So it's kind of hard to tell where this stealthy solar storm came from. And we didn't see any coronagraph signature, so that's something. But that tells us something about our solar cycle, and I'll get to that in a second. Meanwhile, take a look at the dimming here. I mean, the, the bright region here, this glow. This is some of those big regions rotating to the far side. And as these leave, notice we're getting more glow on the east limb. What that means is that we've got a few big regions that have yet to rotate into Earth view. And boy, they are firing big solar storms. You can see them as well as big flares. So expect this respite that we have right now with the active regions on the Earth face disk kind of being a bit snoozy, expect that to not last all that much longer. We may have another day or two before we start really seeing the activity from these regions start taking over. And that's going to bump that solar flare and uh, solar storm risk up quite a bit. Now, one other thing I want you to see is if we switch the colors again, I took that sign off for the front side of the sun so you can see what we're talking about. Look at this gorgeous prominence eruption. Isn't that beautiful? That is a polar crown eruption. It's, it basically is an uh, entire uh, filament that is circles a, uh, the entirety of the polar region of the sun. And not to be outdone, because both hemispheres oftentimes do it at the same time, watch the bottom. There we go. There's another polar crown filament. So both poles, poles go at the same time, and that's telling you something. Once again, these big polar coronal holes up here are trying to kind of reestablish themselves and widen. And that tells us a lot about the declining phase of the solar cycle. Between the stealthy solar storm and these polar crown filaments, we are seeing, we might be moving into the latter part of the declining phase, beginning to see signs here of the coming solar minimum. So this is something to be watching for. In fact, as you can see, some of these regions here, by the way, here's some of that fire and brimstone that we're going to be expecting. But as we switch back here to the stealthy solar storm, this is what we're being hit by right now. It was really tough to find this uh, on the solar disk or in coronagraphs. And these stealthy solar storms always pick up as we get closer to solar minimum. So that's what we're dealing with. It's not very fast right now. The, the, the speed of the solar wind is really slow. It will pick up over time as we start getting that fast solar wind nearby. But these stealthy solar storms that always occur pretty close to fast wind streams is a sure tell that for at least for the amateur radio operators and for possibly the heliobiology sufferers, well, signs of solar minimum are coming. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are expecting that fast solar wind. We're dealing with that uh, stealthy solar storm right now, but we are expecting that fast solar wind. NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions at high latitudes with up to about a 50% chance of a major storm. And then that will calm down just a little bit because we're not expecting this fast solar wind to be all that intense. It's not going to be that big a pocket of fast solar wind. But then as we move in through to the, about the 24th, we're going to be start looking for more fast solar wind because we've got yet another coronal hole that's going to give us some. And we could get some more solar storm launches. So realize that we could get even more uh, possibility for solar storms coming here soon, but nothing uh, anywhere close to the size of that G4 that we had just last week. Now switching to mid-latitudes, while we are expecting again that fast solar wind, we're not really seeing any evidence of, this, of that solar storm, uh, the stealthy solar storm hitting us because it's moving so slowly, it's not going to give much in the way of 
uh, any shows down at mid latitudes, but that fast wind might. So keep your eyes for that wind watch. We could see active conditions and then it was going to calm down in through Monday. And then again, starting around Tuesday, we'll pick up and start looking for some more fast solar wind that could give some shows down at mid latitudes. And now switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting in the mid 120s right now for solar flux. And this means that we have pretty decent radio propagation on Earth's day side. We're sitting at about minor noise on the dayside radio bands. In fact, uh, NOAA is giving us about a 15% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout, only about a 1% chance of X-class flares. That's at the R3 level radio blackout. So amateur radio operators, hey, enjoy this respite because we are going to have big flares return. In fact, starting about Monday or Tuesday, you might notice the noise rising on the bands and that you might notice that we're going to start getting a bigger risk for big solar flares and radio blackouts. So appreciate this while you have it. You've earned it since that big G4 gave us so much noise, uh, but it's not going to last for all that long. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is in the green this week. Boy, is that a big change from last week. We're sitting at the D1 normal range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. We are really not expecting any risk for radiation storms at this moment, which is a wonderful change because that one radiation storm that we had really lasted so long and it was so energetic. In fact, it was a historic historic event it was so strong it caused a ground level event at earth and it also caused more radiation uh, avionics upsets than we have seen since something like 2006 so that storm is going to be that radiation storm is going to be studied for many years to come but luckily things are back down to our baseline we're going to stay in the green so you frequent flyers and this does include air crew and you high risk passengers well you can finally take a breather so the space weather this week is calming down quite a bit from last week. Now we are getting hit by a stealthy solar storm right now, but that's only giving us shows at high latitudes. Here over the next 24 hours or so, we could get hit by some fast solar wind that could bump us up to storm levels, but likely again shows only at, at high latitudes. Mid-latitude aurora photographers, well, only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now amateur radio operators and emergency responders were also getting a nice respite right now, but only expect that respite to last for the next maybe two or three days before you start noticing the bands getting a bit more noisy because we do have those uh, flare active regions that are going to be rotating into earth view so enjoy the quiet while you have it and now you gps users well things are looking a lot better for you we don't have all that much ruckus on the day side or the night side so things should look pretty good all the way around the globe <laughs>